Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of our Chromebook Classroom. Today, we are taking a deep dive into math with their Chromebooks, and I'm here with my good friend, Leanne, who is going to show us some pretty amazing brand new tools. Good morning, Leanne. Good morning, Good morning and, and welcome, welcome to, to episode two in the Chromebook video series. I'm Kyoko Leanne Ora, and I'm one of the three elementary math consultants here at Learning Services. So um, today we are going to take a look at how we can help students make their thinking in math visible. Yeah, and that's so important. Like, you know, I think sometimes, you know, we think about what are those elements when it comes to mathematical instruction, but then also student demonstration of learning. And, and some of the conversations we have, I just, I'm so inspired by the way you, you tell us about why do we need to make it visible? How can we access our students' thinking? Okay, so, well, first let's talk a little bit about um, what visible thinking is and why it's so important. So, as teachers, obviously, it's very difficult to know what's going on inside a student's mind unless we provide the students with the opportunity to make their thinking visible. So, visible thinking is an integral part of, you know, current teaching pedagogy, um, that Socratic questioning, the modeling, the inquiry, all of those kinds of things. Um, and it, it gives us insight into what students understand and also um, how they feel. So by having them articulate and represent steps during their thought process, uh, we're able to determine what they know, believe, and feel about math. We can identify if they have any misconceptions. We can assess the depth of their conceptual understanding. Um, we can take a look at next steps for student learning. Um, and we can also, while they're doing this, promote metacognition and self-regulations in our students um, and help them to reflect and evaluate. It also helps us to reflect and evaluate to improve our instruction. That's awesome. And so you've got some little, little things here. I love how you're highlighting this. Like, what does good math teaching look like? I love that you've got some Coles notes for us. Uh, what's our need to know? What's I feel like this is a Letterman list. It's Leanne's, you know, top 10. But what do you think really stands out for us? So I just wanted to reassure everybody that visible learning is really reflected in current research-based mathematics teaching practices. So, um, you know, through this process, students can develop um, the skills that they really need to be proficient in math. That's awesome. And if anybody's wondering, don't worry, these slides, we're going to have these below the video for you because I know these are just awesome videos. And I love you even connecting us always to that root, that root of our planning. What are our learning intentions? What's that success criteria for students? So, of course, we're always looking to impact student learning, and in this case, we're looking at instructional strategies and using di digital components. Um, and specifically, um, I would like teachers to be able to create assignments using digital components and also um, create a digital platform where students can share their work and also um, help them to communicate their learning through digital representations and also video. This is great. And you know what I'm so excited about is, is you know, Sometimes it's like, do we use digital tools? Do we not do digital tools? We know math, it's so hands-on. And we need those hands-on manipulatives. But but you you kind of, you're, you're, you try to tell us that we need both, right? Yeah, so we know that students, especially younger students, benefit from kinesthetic learning. Physically interacting with manipulatives allows them to process and experience math at a deeper level. So the use of technology in our classroom does not have to be an either or situation. We can give students voice and choice by allowing them to use either physical or digital manipulatives. So although digital models can, they're a little bit easier for us to share, um, we can also use Chromebooks and iPads to easily capture students' work with physical manipulatives mm -hmm. which is then shared on a digital platform. So really there does not have to be a dilemma. I love that message. You know, the geek girl is going to love that. Plus, it makes it available for everyone. Now, what I love about today is you're going to take us into that digital world. You have a brand new tool to share with us. Uh, I was so excited when you first shared with us with me. Uh, so we're going to be jumping into Mathagon's Polypad, which really gives us that workspace that we are going to be able to see that visual learning right in front of us, right? 
Right, so we're using the PolyPad as our uh, digital student workspace, um, and you have already been uh, introduced to it in episode one. So I am just going to um, pull up the PolyPad right here. So this is what the PolyPad looks like right here. Um, I'm already logged in. If you are a teacher, you definitely want to create your own account because your own account is going to allow you, this is very important, to save files. So you can see these are all the files that I have saved from PolyPad and then it's really easy to share. Um, so I have this activity open that we were going to work on. When you share with students, you can create the activity, save it, and then you just have to go up into the sharing here, and there is a share button right there. Um, you can copy the link, share it with students, and then they get their own copy of this that they can manipulate. Oh, that's exciting. And when you hit that share button, I got excited because I saw the Google Classroom logo. We love when we have those partner sign-ins with Google. It just makes it so easy for our students. So you're creating a digital workspace with manipulatives you're sharing it with the students. Now, Leanne, are the students all working in the same space or does it share it so the students each get their own space to work in? So they each will get their own space to work in. So you don't have to worry about um, them if they're changing something um, to your lesson or other students are working on it. Um, and the way Polypad works here, it's, it's a workspace. So you can't resize objects on here. Um, you move the workspace around so you can see what you want to. And if you want to get in closer, then you just use the magnifying glasses to get in closer to work with things. Um, so really it's, it's, it's not like a, a slide deck or anything like that. It's really a workspace where students have access. Now, I know that other um, teachers are using Jamboard and um, lots of other workspaces. Um, the benefit for Mathagon is that you also have access to all of these tools within here. Oh. So there's our math tools that the students can go to quite easily and just pull and use um, those tools as they need them. And so it's the built-in manipulative. So if I'm working in this workspace, I can click on those tiles and I can pull over those math pieces right onto my workspace. Exactly. Um, and there's also some other, you know, it's like a whiteboard as well. So we have our drawing tools. Uh, we have a line tool, which we don't have in Jamboard. I oh yeah. I think we should have a line tool. <laughs> <laughs> and then they, they also have, um, the ability to write fractions here where we actually have a numerator over a denominator oh um, yeah and, and some pieces like that they can add pictures um and insert things as well so it's 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 very flexible that is so fantastic now if i was a teacher do i have the ability then to access and to see my students work you know once they're they're done and, and, and they're finished with that so um, there is an option for creating classroom and putting students in there, but there are privacy issues with that. Um, so what I like to do is I like to just share uh, using the link and then have students actually use um, a screen grab or a screenshot to capture their work, or they can also download um, a picture you can see right here, download the image, and then share that with me later. I love that advice. And so we don't need to create new student accounts. We can continue to use Microsoft Teams and Google Classroom for our digital sharing. And I love that we're creating a workspace that they can then capture and share their thinking. I think that's so fantastic. I love this. And so if anybody else in the division wanted to know more about Mathagon and Polypad, your team is actually helping to put some things together. And you even have some screen grabs for us here in your presentation, just kind of showing us what this could look like. Yeah, so let's just take a look here. So there's our Polypad right here. So um, you're, you're providing that student workspace for them so that they um, have some place to, and as you can see here, um, I like to create videos for my students to show them exactly how to use it so that they can go back and refer to those videos later and they don't have to keep coming to me and asking me. I, I find that's very empowering for them. Love it. Um, and then I instruct them to take a screenshot and upload it to to um, a slide or or whatever whatever platform you choose to have them share their work. So um, so here I and I always have them also um, have access to this so they know how to take a screenshot. Love that. 
what device that they're on. Um, and then once they have this piece right here, so for example, if I were a student and I had done this screenshot here after I've done all my work in the polypad, um, I could have some questions there that I want them to answer. And then I would actually ask them um, to create a screencastify so that they can video explaining their work. So um, screencastify is my go-to, it's so easy to use. Um, just right up here in the corner, there's where the Screencastify is. Students just click on it. Um, they can record. And then once they, I'm, I'm not gonna record. All <laughs> not while we're in Teams, yeah. <laughs> once they have done that, um, they can share it so easily with you uh, just using the, the share link. So I'll just open a video that I already hear have here. So it says copy and share link. They just copy this um, and then they can paste it in their assignment or um, they can paste it on the platform where they're sharing. That is so, so easy. And below this video, we are going to have links to screencast by how to use that with your students. We're going to have a copy. Leanne is so great, shares a copy of this PowerPoint presentation for you so that you can uh, do this with your students, see how she's done this. And you even have some more things for us about sharing student work. Yeah, so there's other ways that you can share. I already talked a little bit about Google Slides, but there is um, also Lumio, which is part of the Smart Learning Suite. Um, you can share it through Google Classroom. And then I don't, a lot of teachers don't know this, but the editable copies in the Math app resource, uh, which is this one right here, allows you to download a copy of um, those student sheets that they have in there. And then you can actually edit them change questions as you would like, and then share those with students. And when you share it with students, they can actually, you can see in this picture right here, um, I've actually inserted that screenshot that I took right here. Yeah. And also put in um, a link to a Screencastify video. So this can, you can share this directly in your Google Classroom, make a copy for every student, then they have a place to put all of their work and you can go back and look at it as you, um, that is amazing. You take in a, a static black line master and made it interactive just the way that we should do. I love this. And so you can get all of Leanne and the entire math team's amazing resources by checking out their SharePoint site. Uh, we'll make sure you have copies of everything that Leanne has shared today below this video. And uh, I really can't wait to see, I can't wait to see teachers use this and, and just show how much they can see more than the answer on the line. You really captured process. And I think that's what's so important here. Um, and I think the final process of making the thinking visible is uh, having them reflect on their learning um, and then communicate that with you. So here I just have an example of a checklist. Of course, everything, if it's co-created with students, it's mm. much more impactful. Um, so, you know, students can go through and they can reflect and see if in their representation and their explanation. They've done all of the things that you know um, are important for good communication in math um, and then have them do a reflection about what they're doing well and also maybe how they can improve. And, and by going through this step, it actually helps to reinforce with students um, what it is that, that they are doing well so that they can continue to do that and also in what direction they need to go to um, improve their work. Uh, I can't thank you enough for all of this. I'm so excited with all the amazing resources that you have so generously shared with all of ECSD. So thank you for being here with me today. Thank you everyone for watching. And uh, if you ever have any questions about using Polypad, Mathagon, MathUp, any of these different types of things, please make sure to reach out to Leanne and her team and check out the SharePoint page. I'll link it below this video as well. I know that they've spent so much time this year just revamping adding even more resources uh, for everyone to be able to take and use so thank you so much leanne for being here thanks for having me trish and i hope that was helpful for everybody and good luck bye everyone bye.